All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us um, in this uh, info session for our Create Change uh, uh, Fellowship and Residency Program. Uh, my name is Atui Ramos Hermin. I am Director of Programs at the London Art Project, also an alumni of the program. And yeah, today we're gonna walk through this process, but I wanna pass it on to the team. Thanks for joining us. Hey everyone, my name is Lady Sasha Jones. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and hers, and I am currently the Artist Engagement Manager at the LP. Hi, my name is Tiara Austin. I use she, her, and they, them pronouns, and I'm the Programs Associate at the LP. We are super excited for this year's open call and what we have in store for the upcoming cohort of fellows and artists. We're really happy to have you all join us as well. During this info session, we will take you through the program overview and guidelines, hear from one of our program alum, and close with answering any questions you may have for us. If you do have any questions while we were presenting, feel free to drop them in the chat, but we're gonna answer them at the end during a live Q&A session. So feel free to drop them, but we'll definitely circle back to answer them. And a quick access note, I'm currently sharing my screen. Um, but if you look to the bottom right of your screen and you are in need of captions, feel free to hit the turn on captions button and you should see the live captioning um, begin after you hit that. We are also recording this session just to let everybody know um, and we're going to make it available to view for reference afterwards via our YouTube channel. And so that being said, that being said about the recording, if you feel comfortable having your camera off, feel free to do so, um, considering that. We are also asking folks to keep your mics on mute for the duration of the session. Um, and I think that's all of our access notes. Um, as I already said, feel free to drop anything in the comment box if you need any assistance technically at all. Now I will pass it on to my colleague Atwe to give an overview of the Laundromat project. Great, thank you, Tiara. And thanks again for joining us. Um, so I will begin just briefly sharing some foundational uh, details about who we are as an organization um, and, and just give you a little bit of grounding about that and then we'll just um, move forward. So just so you know, we can go to the next slide. The London Mind Project's mission is to advance artists and neighbors as change agents in their own communities. Uh, and we do that through uh, many ways, so residencies and fellowship, which we'll go through today. Um, so next one. Uh, and the, what, what it's important is that, you know, we envision a world in which artists and neighbors and communities of color work together to unleash the power of creativity to transform lives. Um, and we do this by making sustained investment in the growing community of multiracial, multigenerational, and multidisciplinary artists and neighbors committed to societal change by supporting their art making, community building, and leadership development. Uh, and also, you know, one of the things that we are proud of and what guides all our work, it's that we ground, ground our work in our values. So we can go to the next one. Um, so, and this is basically what, you know, uh, all the things that we do, even internally as staff members, but also uh, with our programs, uh, is where we are, you know, uh, grounded. So. Just briefly, nurture creativity. This is the work that we you know we believe that everyone's creative in their own way, including, of course, artists. Um, be a people of color center organization, which is very important for our mission. Uh, and you know we create change through our arts and culture, in uh, in value place, write our own histories, and be propelled by love. Just want to go briefly through those. There's more details about all this on our website, but just wanted to you know give you a quick round down of those, um, is our values are the core of who we are and the great change for the structure around this. So uh, what we, what's important for us that we ask participants and applicants, you know, to share which LP values resonates with them the most. This is through the application process. Um, and this is a question simply, you know, to prompt some understanding is about values alignment, perspectives, you know, and, and, and uh, the ways that candidates uh, participate in the program. So. So you'll see a question, I will go through that later, but you'll see a question there. Um, so let's see, uh, when we go to the next one. Um, so this is a brief uh, summary of, the, uh, of our program. So 
we have residencies and fellowships. And, you know, the thing is that we have this combination of uh, we locally grounded uh, and thinking about creative activations. Um, and we do different ways of, you know, collaborating with community uh, members through this work. Um, so we're just in a big transition moment uh, in the organization. And one of the things I wanted to share with you, we just announced yesterday uh, that we're very excited to, you know, share that we'll be, uh, our work will be um, based in the neighborhood of bed -Stuy. This is our, you know, our dream for, since we started back in 20, 2005, where we wanted to have our program space and our office administrative space combined to one location. And that's actually where we were founded originally. So we want to go back to our roots and connect with the network of artists that we already have that are in central Brooklyn and also with community members there. Of course, this program is bigger than that, but just wanted to give you a quick, you know, update on where we are and actually wanted to invite you to um, next week. Uh, we have an open house that will talk more about the things we'll be doing there. Uh, so just wanted to just mention that. Um, so I hope that gives you a quick grounding and understanding of the context. Uh, the program itself is not going to be in bed -Stuy, but we'll, we'll, we'll leave that on to um, my colleague to talk more about that. So I'll pass it on to Lady Sasha. Hey again, everyone. I'm going to go through two sections. Uh, one, to give an overview of our curriculum pedagogy, as well as uh, I'm gonna introduce uh, some of the key elements of our fellowship program. Um, next slide. So since 2005, uh, the Create Change program has supported more than 165 multidisciplinary artists and 80 plus community-based projects as well. Uh, the 2021 program will mark our 16th residency cohort and our 11th fellowship cohort, which is super exciting. Uh, during the program, artists will meet with a diverse roster of peer activists, arts professionals, curators, change agents, you name it, offering a diverse um, offering of strategies for creating work at the intersection of art and civic action. The program is heavily structured around artists learning and creating within a cohort setting. Um, practicing peer-to-peer -peer exchanges is um, big to, to uh, the ways that we approach our work, um, both peer-to-peer -peer exchanges and collaboration. Next slide. Uh, to provide an overview of our pedagogical framework, there are three learning blocks that I wanna share with you all and go over. Um, and they're what really base or ground our curriculum and what we shaped our curriculum around. Um, you'll see that they are reflective of our tagline, the LP's tagline, which many of you may be familiar with, which is make art, build community, and create change. Um, participants uh, within both the fellowship and residency program will work deeply with this framework throughout the program. So the first, uh, make art acts. What role does art, culture, and creativity play in making meaning, shifting narratives, and creating change in the world? Participants will examine a range of artworks across the fields of social practice and creative place making that line with the LP's approaches to cultural asset mapping and leadership development. Next slide. Um, the next one is <laughs> Build Community, which invites artists to explore how can art and cultural practices build trust and accountability with communities, particularly the communities they're working with, but community at large. Uh, participants will explore approaches to fostering attunement with community rhythms, building reciprocal partnerships, and the art of meeting people where they are. Next slide. Our last, third and last um, learning block is create change, which addresses power and leadership, um, which are huge uh, themes, uh, reoccurring themes throughout the program. So understanding uh, that and how the ways in which power exists within ourselves and within our communities, um, understanding how do we, or questioning how do we creatively leverage power for equity and positive societal change. Um, so really mapping power dynamics is um, something that we focus on and have been um, uh, returning to year after year um, for the past few years as we've been strengthening our curriculum. So participants will explore personal and collective relationships to race, power, and privilege in order to facilitate social transformation through their art and cultural practices. 
So the next slide is um, where I'm going to transition to talking about the fellowship program. Um, as you probably have read, the fellowship program is for artists and cultural producers who are interested in developing and deepening a collaborative community-based and social engaged practice. Uh, the program is shaped as an intensive learning practice model that seeks to develop, workshop, and generate ideas that incorporate the LP's values in our community-based methodology um, or approach, <laughs> if you will. Uh, this year, fellows uh, are encouraged to apply with the cultural arts project idea um, that they wish to develop and include through uh, sorry, that they wish to develop and incubate throughout the program. Um, this is actually a pretty new feature. Uh, usually fellows do not apply with um, an idea or a project that they are interested in uh, working with and developing, but since um, this year will be virtual, we are focusing on um, supporting uh, the speculative design of, of our artists, like uh, supporting our artists with um, designing projects and helping them uh, incubate them um, as much as we can. It's a, it's a new element of the fellowship program that we're very excited about. Um, so with that, we're looking for artists uh, for the fellowship program who want to explore strategies for entering and building um, within a community using our values and our method as a foundational approach. Next slide. Uh, so the program format, um, uh, the program features a, a few different kind of elements. Uh, the biggest one of the, what's at the core are our series of workshop trainings. Um, we also have, which we'll probably need, those trainings will probably bi-weekly bi or uh, we, we try and have one, one or two, or at least two a month, sorry about that. Um, also, we have a wonderful offering of individual and group coaching sessions with our cultural organizing coach, um, which have been a staple of the program, I believe, since 2013. Um, it's actually really, really wonderful and helpful and resourceful uh, feature of the fellowship program. Uh, we have weekly office hours with LP staff. This is something that came out of us um, pivoting to the virtual space this year. Um, and so, yeah, any, I think we we'll pick a day and one gets to check in with staff as, as they wish um, on anything from creative practice, um, their personal creative practice, the project they're working on, um, some of the group work that we're doing or any element of the program or um, anything really. Uh, it's really just open, like open door office hours. Um, the program will culminate uh, with a public presentation where each fellow will present uh, their work. Um, we're thinking of this as a, a big culminating um, kind of digital program that'll take place at the very end of the program. Uh, and just note, the fellowship uh, is a six months program uh, scheduled to take place between February and either June or July. We're still playing with some final dates around um, the final presentation, um, but that's pretty much the length. And yes, the entire program will be conducted virtually. Um, across a series of digital platforms. Google Hangouts is something that we use internally at the LP, but also Zoom, and we're thinking of, um, uh, we're investigating now some other um, applications or um, platforms that may uh, kind of like strengthen, strengthen the virtual experience uh, for our artists this coming year. And also for the first time, uh, each fellow participant will actually receive a modest stipend of $500. Um, and it's something that we've been working hard <laughs> towards uh, to make, uh, to, to include. Um, uh, I'm also an alum of the program. I was a fellow in 2013. Um, and back then, uh, the program was not a free program. We paid uh, for the past few years. It's been a free program, uh, like free of cost uh, for artists. And now um, for the 2021 program, we're actually offering a modest stipend of $500. Um, so yeah, that's something we're super excited about. Um, and eligibility, uh, next slide. Um, so yeah, we'll go, we're happy to go over more of this during the uh, Q&A. If you have any questions about anything that's listed here that I'm going to say, um, feel free to put in the chat. I'm gonna field the questions, Atwe and I, um, so we can make sure we get, get to them at the end. Um, but for the fellowship, we're looking for candidates who demonstrate a practice or deep interest in socially uh, engaged art or community-based art um, are in alignment with our values and POC principles. You'll see uh, questions around that in the application, are at least 21 years of age, 
are not enrolled in a degree-seeking program at the time of the program <laughs> um, and are preferably based in NYC but um, can be temporarily or recently have left the city. Uh, and we included this, which I know is some, it's kind of funky and seem a little fuzzy, but um, we just wanted to recognize that, you know, due to COVID-19, uh, a lot of artists um, possibly who have called the city home and have um, built community here have possibly recently left um, or temporarily based outside of the city and um, just still wanted to make the fellowship open to them. Uh, so yeah, if you have any questions around that particular point, please do not hesitate to email us. Happy to answer um, any questions you may have around that. But the last two eligibility points are we're looking for artists who are committed to working collaboratively within a cohort setting. As I, as I said, that's a big part of the program um, and are familiar with the cultural history and local issues impacting communities of color. Um, yeah, I think that's, that is it for me. On to Tiara. All righty. So I'm transitioning to the residency program. Um, and just to provide a brief overview, the residencies are flagship create change program that supports the development of participatory and community attuned creative projects by artists working within the community. And just to, just to note that community is explored broadly here at the LP. So we're including geographical community, but as also are encompassing communities of affinity and identity. Um, so um, also a little note that in the application, we ask you to describe your connection or investment um, to your proposed community, but we're gonna do some more kind of deep dive on shifted to accommodate our current moment, which will allow for artists' projects to occur fully digitally for the first time. So you may also elect for your project to occur in person or a combination of both, but that fully digital component is definitely a new kind of addition for our moment and this year. And um, for those of you who are looking to carry out in-person projects, our application also does ask that you um, reflect on how you ensure the safety of community members. Um, and then let's see else oh yeah so just to share that the as you can see on the screen past projects also have taken place at various community sites from laundromats and urban gardens and playgrounds and community centers just to give you a little tidbit of that right and moving on to the program format so the residency is a year-long program so it runs from january to december um, and offers a total of twenty thousand dollars so fifteen thousand of that is honorarium, it's completely yours to use as you, you wish. The other 5,000 is for production costs. So um, anything like documentation or a software, um, technology that you need, um, a myriad of things have come through as production costs that we definitely love to support um, our artists as they're carrying out their projects in that way. And then the non-monetary support includes, similarly to the fellowship, the 10 workshop trainings um, and coaching sessions with our culture organizing coach. Um, and then separately from the fellowship, different public program opportunities, including um, open studio sessions. So each artist will have their own kind of open studio session as a public program to feature their work. Um, and monthly meetings with LP program staff. Um, I think, as were mentioned, very like office hours, very kind of open, time for us to connect, um, troubleshoot things in your project, your personal practice, personal life even, just like a time for you to just like download what's happening and then kind of keep the LP in the loop about, you know, where you are and, and think about how we can best uh, support you at the moment and write out the shifts and changes um, as, you know, are inevitable at this time. And then finally, we have a one-to-one -one mentorship program, which is a new component this year um, well, not this year, sorry, in the past two years, I should say. Um, so um, that would be kind of a process in which we pair residents with an art professional or cultural organizer or change agent more generally in the field that you are wanting to connect with. Um, and we'd offer that person a stipend. And really, it's just for an opportunity for you to develop your creative practice alongside somebody that you look up to and want to be in conversation with, with monetary support that's provided by the LP. And um, the last thing is that um, we are selecting three artist projects for the 2021 program. And so that's three, either three individuals and or three folks who are applying as a collaborative, just to share that tidbit of information. And next we have the residency program eligibility. 
So ideal candidates for the residency would really have experience developing collaborative and community-based projects. Um, they would also development, development, demonstrate <laughs> an alignment with LP values um, and also have the capacity to kind of work in a group and have a strong background in community organizing and outreach strategies. And the more kind of granular eligibility points for the residency is that folks should be 21 years of age, be currently based in New York City or have significant kind of community connection to the city as we're hyper-local in our work and are committed to that. Um, folks would also be committed to co-creating a community art project. And finally, folks would be familiar with the cultural history and issues that are impacting the community that you're pro proposing to work with. And I guess you're gonna see that come up again in um, the applications I said before, thinking about that investment in the community that you're kind of proposing to, to be in collaboration with our, and or a part of yourself. Alrighty, so I'm gonna pass it back to Lady Sasha for the open call. Hey again. Um, so I'm gonna give some quick details about the open call. We can go to the next slide. Awesome. Um, so yeah, the application closes on October 18th um, at 11:59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, I advise folks to try their best to get it in before that uh, deadline. Uh, if anyone already has uh, experience with Submittable, uh, you know, the platform can get a little shaky towards um, towards the, the, the final minutes or beats of, of an application um, open call. So just try your best to get it in a little bit before that 11.59 deadline. Um, and just to share that we are aiming to complete the selection process by early December of this year. The key dates um, that are noted in the slide is just a guide for how we, they are or can play a guide, um, play as a guide for how we structure the selection process. So um, as you see here, um, after the applications close, um, the LP staff will actually review all the applications um, ourselves internally, and we select a short list of candidates to advance on to the interview panel round. Um, first, we conduct uh, a series of individual interviews with residency candidates on Friday, November 13th. Please mark that date in your calendar. Um, uh, for folks who, who advance onto that round, uh, we have a series of slots that we um, make available and folks get to choose um, a time that works best for them. Uh, the panel uh, will not only include LP staff, but members of our artists and community council. They serve as our jury panel for this stage of the selection process. Uh, each interview will last no more than 30 minutes and is formatted around, or our suggested format is a five minute kind of project pitch, if you will, by the artist, and then a Q&A. Uh, the remainder time is um, left for the jury to um, engage, engage you in a Q&A kind of um, interview or discussion. The next day on November 14th, if you, as you see here, uh, we will conduct a group interview with our fellow candidates. Um, the fellowship interview is shaped uh, as a big group interview and includes a series of small group activities. Um, that interview session will run for about an hour um, for both interview panels. They will be conducted virtually and attendance is mandatory for one to be considered for the program. Um, I know that we do not have the times, uh, particularly the time listed for the fellowship one, um, but closer to closer to the time, <laughs> I should let you all know um, when, and, when and where it will happen. It will be in early afternoon, um, just to share, and I believe we can share this right now. Um, we have our scheduled panels running from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, on both of those dates. So, those interview times will be somewhere within there. Um, and yeah, following the interviews just to share, as you'll see on the application, we do ask for a reference. Um, so ap after that interview uh, round, we do call all the references, uh, the folks that you indicate in the application. So please, please provide uh, the correct contact information. Uh, just to share, we usually email folks um, and ask for permission uh, before <laughs> just giving them a ring. So there, there definitely aren't any cold calls, so they'll get an email first. Um, and just to note that letters of recommendation are not required. And I think that's it.
onto Otway to dig more into eligibility as well as uh, the application. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This is just, I hope you're able to see this closely. And if not, we have the um, PDF of this presentation so you can actually see it better. Um, but just to give you a quick summary uh, of what we've been talking about and just, you know, briefly, so that um, uh, it's free to apply. You don't have to pay any fee for, to, apply, to apply for this program. Um, let's see. Uh, the folks that are required, and then this is divided into new new applications, and then alumni because alumni fellows uh, are able to and eligible to become residents. So this is also part of the the what we offer. So to our uh, alumni that have been part of the program, um, so so there's requirement to attend to the virtual gatherings, all the wor workshops and you know meetings and things like that is for the new applications. Identify as a person of color, in particular, is for residents. Uh, that's is always been part of our DNA to be able to do that. So if we keep that's continuing. Um, applicants have to live, work, or they are already accountable to their own community of affinity, geographic, ge geography, or identity. So that's mostly for the residents that are actually working. Uh, they you know should have uh, already some connections to communities that they will, would like to work with. Um, uh, eligible for residency, of course, the folks that are applying for residency on their own, and then uh, alumni fellows as well, like I was, I was mentioning. The commitment, you know, is between five and six months, the fellowship, so this for the fellows, and then there's a year-long commitment for the residents. Uh, so it's 12 months in that, you know, all all of the things that we, that Lady Sasha was ex explaining earlier. Um, and then, so, and just to clarify, and I think that might help with some of the questions. Um, so the difference, the big difference right now between the fellowship and the residency is that, you know, you apply the, with a cultural project that is to be actualized, that to be made in the real world, that we support that, that's for the residency. And for the fellowship, it's the same thing. The only difference is that we would like to support, you know, it's more about ideation and support um, so the project does not have to be, you know, happen in the real world. Just kind of give you that uh, distinction. Um, and then the who's eligible for, you know, after, this is the thing, this is the great thing about, and we don't talk as much about this, but I think it's important to note is that after you finish the program, after you're done with, you know, our, our uh, relationship in, in to create change, it doesn't end there, you know, we continue doing different kinds of opportunities and, 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 and for alumni. So we have different kinds of programs that we do, uh, that we'll be doing in the community. We have workshops, we have special projects, we have special commissions and micro grants and different kinds of opportunities that once you've uh, graduated from the program, you know, we have the saying that once LP fam, always LP fam. So, you know, we will like to continue our relationships, you know, through you know, the years uh, after this. So there would be there different opportunities available uh, for you um, if, you know, after you go through that. So just mentioned that. And then the honorarium is $15,000 for uh, honor honorarium for the residencies uh, and $5,000 for production. Uh, and then uh, $500 stipend is for, you know, the fellows. And then the last part is that, you know, one of the things that we do as part of the alumni engagement work is that we have a network of all the folks that have been through this program since we started in 2006 doing this residency and then the fellowship later on. So you'll join uh, a network of practitioners in the field. There's different kinds of, you know, things that we share. There's job opportunities. There's other, you know, support and uh, resources that would be, that would just kind of uh, have ongoing. So, so just wanted to uh, share that with folks. So just give you a quick summary of some of, of some of the things that we've been talking about, just to kind of uh, summarize it in this way. I hope this is helpful. So I think it's next slide. Uh, the application. So I think I need to share my screen a little bit here. Um, uh, so let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. And, I'm, and I think you might need to, uh, TR, I think I might need to, to 
stop sharing your screen so I can share mine. <laughs> if that's OK. So I just want to do a quick, just to highlight a couple of things to um, uh, about the application itself, just to give you, you know, some uh, pointers and hopefully clarifications. So uh, just give me one second while I am able to get to that. Uh, one second. Actually, hold on. hold on. One second. Just having a technical thing. Okay, well, anyways, I'll just go through the questions because it's, you know, self-explanatory. Um, so we're doing the application through Submittable. I just have some technical thing. I just don't want to keep the time going more. So basically, you know, in Submittable, that's the link you'll see on our website. But I want to go through two, two questions in particular that will be different for fellows and the residents. They're basically very similar applications, but there's a couple, there's two differences there. I wanna just go through that uh, for, uh, for a minute. So under the residency application, you know, we, we ask regular things around, you know, uh, why you wanna be part of the program, that kind of thing. But the, the important part is, you know, in terms of for the residencies in particular, you know, it's, you know, we would like to have a product description. What is it that you would like to do? Uh, what kind of format or, you know, form will take shape? If it's, you know, in digital, if it's going to be virtual, in person, what ways that's going to be, our combination of those. Um, what is the, what is your vision for the format of the project that you're thinking about? Of course, it has to engage community in one way or another. So, you know, that's, that's at the core. Um, so, and, so for example, and we also, because of this moment that we're living in, we wanna make sure what are your, what plans do you have to make sure that folks are safe? And of course there's resources that we have that we can share, but just wanna understand from your perspective, how would you project engage in a safe way with participants, uh, community members, you know, due to COVID. Um, and then, you know, what are the ways that you would like to engage that community? So what's the role of the community members? Um, and then what relationship do you have with them? Um, and then, you know, if you have any potential partners and things like that that you would like to share, um, and then just a brief timeline, you know, and we understand things change and things, you know, they don't have to be perfect. I'm going to do this on, you know, September 3rd and then on October 27th, they're going to do this. We don't, we're not interested in that because we understand that is a year ahead, but at the very least, you get a sense of what is your thinking around planning. Uh, so it's very basic timeline. And then finally, it's the a budget. So we have a template that you can follow if you like. You can also send us your own if, you, if that's easier for you. It's just a PDF upload, like a document upload, um, so that we get an understanding, you know, what are resources you're thinking about, what is the, um, uh how you're thinking about you know support and this is a part this is five thousand dollars you know we think about the the 20k 15 is for you to pay your rent to do whatever you want you know it's your salary in you know, your other area um and the 5k is mostly for production and if you have any other funding resources that you uh have already applied to other grants or anything like that that you would like to include as part of, you know, if, if, if for example, your project is more than $5,000, that's what we are able to commit. But if you have other funding sources that you'd like to add to your project, you're welcome to, you know, add that there and just indicate that on the budget. Uh, so that's, you know, very straightforward and simple, I hope. Um, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for the residency. The other questions are very standard, so I just don't want to go through those. Uh, and then for the fellowship, the difference, oh, and one thing just to note, if you have, if you have, is this the first time you're applying for the residency or uh, if there's a question if you would like to be considered to be a fellow in the case that you were uh, not been, you know, not, don't get selected. So just keep that in mind if you, that's something that might be interesting to you. Um, so, and then for the fellowship, uh, so it's similar, you know, we would like to, you to describe your project idea that you, you know, exploring that you would like to 
get deep more in the community engagement work and they want to learn more about our methods and kind of incorporate some of those ideas into your own uh, project. And this is a short description of that. And, and then thinking about what areas that you think would you like to strengthen uh, your application and your you know project. So, oh, I would like to uh, have more expertise in community partnerships, or you know, I would like to collaborate with community in an ethical way, or whatever you know, things that indicate what things you would like to you know focus on. Um, and that's it. There's no budget or anything like that for the fellows because you know we're not expecting you to do it in the real world, uh, in the real time. Just may say that um, during that. So yeah. But that's pretty much a quick summary of the difference in the application process. Uh, you have to have a submittable account, those kind of things, you know, you can do. And just to, uh, one thing that I would like, always wanted to um, share is uh, make sure that, you know, when you do applications, technology, as you know, things don't work sometimes. And sometimes, you know, internet goes out or whatever. If you have a Word document or somewhere else or notes or you know, pay, whatever it works for you, just to make sure that you have your application outside of submittable and then just copy paste it there just to be safe because things happen and, and you know, just to have as a backup. That will, I will recommend you to do something like that. Um, and then the other thing is that the application usually closes at midnight, so it is like automatic. So just don't wait until the last minute. <laughs> uh, so that's it. Um, and we'll 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 take some of the questions later on. But hope that gives you some context and uh, ideas. Um, so let's see. Uh, yeah, we can talk about criteria and things like that on the Q and A because we're. I want to give some folks time to talk more about um, the next part. So, and I think we have someone that is um, joining us today. Um, let's see. And this is an alumni of the program. We wanted to bring someone that you know uh, has been with us. Uh, last year and before that she was a fellow uh, as well and we're really excited that she's able to be here and uh, Bianca Monet uh, and she did an amazing project last year um, with basically oral history based uh, and it was exploring uh, and expanding and uh, notions of abundance uh, thinking about spirituality process of birth, vitality, and wellness. And she was working in particular in bed in Brooklyn. Um, and she conducted a series of oral histories that turned into soundscapes and uh, story, a different kind of form of storytelling and to document, you know, uh, the different folks and points of view around wellness and health uh, in particular. And, 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 and she's, you know, it was interviewing doulas, moms, spiritual practitioners, alternative medicine professionals. Um, and basically she created installations and, uh, and presented the work at a community garden as part of her process of culminating the event. It was a beautiful event and a great and wonderful project. And, and Bianca is here joining us today. And I just have one question for you, Bianca. Uh, when you get a chance to meet yourself, and it's basically, um, what was your, what was the, the, the biggest learning experience that you had when you were a uh, resident last year that you would like to share with folks or any in insights about, you know, your work around that, the big learnings from last year? Thank you for joining us. Hi, hi everyone, how are you doing tonight? Good. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, great. So um, thank you for allowing me to come and share my experiences. I've been involved um, in many different ways for maybe over 12 years with the Laundromat Project. Um, so to answer your question, a couple things I walked away from, and I still consider um, when doing projects now, but um, how we enter and exit community became um, central for me. And um, how do we do that with respect and integrity and consistency? 
Um, and then this idea that although you may be exiting a community in a particular time and space, you really have to question if you ever really exit that community. Um, and do you really want to exit that community? So that's something I, I still think about today. I also, um, are you guys working with Ebony this time? I'm just curious. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> OK. So um, you know, in a series of workshops and consultations with other cultural fo folks, in particular Ebony, I remember one time she asked us, um, what are you going to do if nobody shows up? Because all of our projects tend to be very, um, I think the word is uh, participatory oriented. So especially for what I was planning, um, I needed folks to show up and be there. Some other um, residents were doing like theater productions. Um, some people do things with their hands, but everyone kind of has to be there in order to make something. Anything around healing involves somebody to heal or someone to be, in, you know, in, in conversation with around healing. And so that for me um, made me nervous, one, but it also made me, it helped in conceptualizing what the culminating event would look like. Um, and how would I get folks there and how would I um, engage with uh, people? So what came out of that was I do oral history and sound art. But Ebony said to me, um, what your practice is very like one on one based. And I'm keeping my camera off because turning on my camera just stops on the Internet. Um, so apologies in that about that. Um, so what I ended up doing was a live oral history component around food. So I have a friend um, that's East African, and he had all these stories about the food that he grew up with, and how uh, you know just he just shared narratives of food um, and memories, memories of certain uh, certain dishes that were significant to him and he cooked those dishes and brought it so you know being challenged to consider how people will engage with my process outside of the one-on-one -on -one interviews that I do or being challenged to consider how do you get people to participate so not only did they witness a live oral history or my process but then they tasted food and had the opportunity to ask questions um, and then I had an exhibition around the garden of the final product of the sound artscapes that I created with these interviews. So what what I walked away with was sometimes you have to do um, multiple levels of engagement with community. Uh, and, and we were in that garden, I believe, all day. Um, yeah, it was an all day event. And so every two hours we were doing something just to keep folks interested so we kept um different people coming in and out every two hours food was a major component during the day or ended up being a major component um so i hope i answered your question i feel like i'm rambling now so i'm gonna stop there no thank you appreciate that um can you hear me yeah okay so uh thank you for sharing and i think this is a good moment thank you uh i think it's helpful i think it's a good moment to uh, have folks um, go through the questions. Is that okay? And then Bianca, stay here if, you, if folks have any questions in particular for her. Um, and we can go through some of the questions that you know were shared. Some of folks, some folks shared questions beforehand. So we have some of those here, and then we have collected the ones that just came through this session, and we're gonna go through them now. That sounds good. Cool. Um, let's see. So, uh, yes, is a fellowship program only for experienced artists? Um, no, <laughs> basically, you know, this is part of the, the short answer is no. Um, you don't have to have, you know, a MFA, BFA, whatever, you know, uh, degree or anything like that. 
Um, we're interested in, you know, we firmly believe that creativity and creative, you know, production does not have to have a degree or a preparation like that. So uh, we are open to different kinds of experiences and backgrounds. So yeah, I hope that answers that. So you don't have to have a degree or a special training or anything like that. There should be a creative practice, whatever that is, but we don't require you to be, you know. Yes, I hope that, help, that helps. There's another one, next one. I hope that helps too. Maybe, hey, Lady Sasha, can you take that one? Or should I? <laughs> uh, all right, so I can, oh. go, ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, yeah, the next question uh, asks, is there a geographical focus or theme for the program? Uh, so no, there, <laughs> there, there are neither uh, for, for uh, either of the fellowship or residency programs. Um, like I shared earlier, fellows will be workshopping um, the design of speculative projects and residents can propose projects that are shaped around any community of their choosing, whether that's a community of geography, preferably if it's a community of geography, it's, it's NYC based, but also communities of affinity or identity. Um, and also I think to the question that Atwe also just answered, um, there were a few questions around um, that, that asked if there was a certain discipline um, or a creative medium that, that the program is shaped around? And the answer is no, where we have artists who are food practitioners and chefs to draftsmen and draftswomen or, um, yeah, painters, photographers, performers. I think there are a lot of questions around performance art being, um, is, is performance art an eligible um, medium or um, discipline? And, and yes, it's, it's all open, it's all eligible. Um, yeah, yeah, I hope that's helpful. Just to add, including, actually, there was a question about clothing design, and we're open to that. We actually had a resident artist a couple of years ago that was part of her practice. So, yes, um, we're not looking for a specific medium. So, yes, if clothing is what you do, that's great. Uh, should we go to the next slide? Yes, and... I can take the next one. And if my captions aren't working, I can also drop the answer into the chat. Um, so the next question, will the program convene in person, online, or a mix of the two? So we are planning for the 2021 Create Change program to be fully virtual. All of our convening sessions will be scheduled through Zoom or Google Meet alongside engagements across other digital platforms. As we said, we're playing around trying to make it exciting. <laughs> Um, we are taking learnings from this year's pivot to virtual engagement to enhance um, next year's format. And so we're really thinking deeply about community building um, amongst the cohort and kind of more programmatic opportunity and offerings to kind of keep the um, program dynamic. Um, and so I can drop that in the chat in case my um, captions aren't working. But that is the answer to that one. Um, let's see. And I think we can advance to the next one now. Sorry, that was me. <laughs> I was trying to put both of these questions together. So they, two different uh, registrants uh, asked this question. I thought that that one response that TR just read kind of fit both of them. Um, so how will, so in, in addition, how will the next cohort be organized differently? And uh, like TR said, we are taking a lot of the things that we learned from this year and trying to strengthen next year's program. Um, and I think community building is the thing that we are really focusing on because it's it's something that is, uh, as we all have shared, the, the cohort kind of feel is a big part of the program and how to also get the artists to collaborate um, and exchange amongst one another is something that we're trying to keep, keep, uh, keep going strong, I guess. I don't know, I'm losing words right now. Uh, although we'll be digital and virtual. So uh, all the different platforms that we'll be um, accessing um, will hopefully uh, be to the benefit of at least keeping some of those core elements of the program alive. I'm sorry, you can go to the next one. Sorry that I repeated, TR. <laughs> I can take that. So yes, you can apply as a collective. Actually, the project I did as a resident artist back in 2012 was um, 
we were a collective. So yes, that is how we can judge with regards to collective work proposals. So what we're looking at is if the, is the work that the collective has done together. Um, so if you work with this person or you know group of folks before, um, great, just include that work and just mention that in the uh, application itself. If this is the first time you're working with this you know collaborative partner, um, just make sure that you, the work is representative for both you know folks that will be uh, included in the work. So in the actual application. So yes. Next one. All right, I'll do this one. So, and this is connected to this, you know, uh, folks that have been out of the city and want to come back. And, you know, um, we are very interested, you know, one of the things I just want to, just there's, you know, two, two things I'll say. Um, one is uh, there should be a connection to New York. Whatever project you're doing or you're proposing, there should be a connection to, you know, New York. Um, and either, you know, you are the community you're working with is in New, is in New York or connected to New, has connection to New York or you have connections in New York or, you know, or that way, or you are based in New York. So uh, that's what's, you know, what, what we're looking for. Um, yeah, we, in terms of, you know, providing any kind of support and if you want to move to New York for the first time to do a project, we don't, we're not able to do that. So let's say, you know, you're going to relocate just for this. There's, we don't have resources, to be honest, to, you know, support something like that. Um, but, yeah, but the projects themselves, there has to be a connection to the city in any borough. It doesn't have to be, you know, it's that. Um, next one. Uh, I think, uh, no, now I would, be at, would like to add to this question or anything, because we have a couple of more questions that were shared. No, I don't have anything I'd, I'd like to add to this one. Um, I was going to move on to the, the questions we had in the chat. Um, oh, you can't hear me? Can folks not hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear Lady Sasha? I can hear you both. Or Tiara? I can't hear anybody. <laughs> okay. Yeah, sorry. I think, yeah, I think you're lagging, but we're all we're all good. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so I'll I'll go on to the questions that popped up in the chat. Um, so there was one. I'm sorry. I I have a name that folks butcher all the time. Um, so my my apologies uh, for doing that <laughs> to folks. But she thought Q uh, asked who should apply to the artist residency versus the fellowship program. I think that uh, the graphic that Atsui shared, that kind of blue and white table, um, kind of gets at that program, uh, that, that, that question, my, sorry. Um, I think the biggest difference is uh, really at, at the core of what those, those the two programs are. Uh, the fellowship is more of a kind of training collaborative um, program for artists who, um, yeah, kind of want a more, not foundational, <laughs> but a, a non-practice-based approach to engaging um, with our curriculum, whereas uh, the residency is uh, is deeply seated uh, as a practice-based program. So folks are applying to the residency. If you have a project that a project idea that you're really excited about and really want to develop and um, see manifested, I, I think that you should definitely apply to the residency. Um, and as Atwe said um, earlier, a lot of our fellows return um, to become residents again. We really believe in supporting our alumni artists. Um, so that pathway is definitely something that's open to artists who may not have a project at that time or may not be ready or, um, yeah, ready or have the capacity to commit to developing the project within a, a, year, a year timeline. Um, I think the fellowship could could definitely be a place to start um, and to build from there. There's another question, and maybe someone else, um, I, I can jump in, but if someone else has anything else to add, feel free. Uh, but Jesus Hernandez asked, um, can, can it be a project that already exists and follows those values and approach? Um, 
And I want to say yes, right, Atwe? I guess the folks yeah. are applying with res applying to the residency with projects that are already in motion and already active. I think that that makes sense. Um, and I think there's already precedent for that as well, right? Yeah, and there's definitely, we've, we've done that before. So yes. Um, yep, I think that's short answer is yes. <laughs> Doesn't have to be a new project. Can be an expansion of it or something, but or add it. Yeah. Uh, there's another question. I imagine a portion of this year's programming occur online. Can staff share any reflections or thoughts on what might be make a successful online hybrid residency project? Um, hmm. Yeah, we had to change really quickly. We we decide we made a decision that we wanted to continue doing the programs without, you know, regardless of what happened. So we just change quickly to do everything online. Um, so let's see. Mm, I think that uh, one of the lessons I we learned, and maybe I speak for myself, but you know, I think it's uh, folks will echo this, is you know, I think that uh, making it very intentional, uh, especially online, how do we uh, Build relationships and community because you we don't you don't have the thing as like oh I'm going to get a snack and you kind of run into somebody and chat and like make this you know personal connection, so that's very hard to do online. So we're really thinking about you know how can we of course we, there's no way to replicate that through this medium, but we're really thinking uh, hard about how do we get to a place where folks really are connecting more than just you know through the little boxes that we're all in at the moment. Um, so that's, I think, is the biggest thing we're adapting uh, for next year. Um, and I think for the projects, uh, let's see, some of the artists have changed the way that they connected with you know, community members or you kind of thinking more about instead of in person doing interviews online and things like that. So those are some, yeah. Any other thoughts? Yeah, I would say, you know, one of the things that I, I don't think that this language made it into our open call text, like our final copy, but, you know, I think we're definitely leaning into projects or excited or have seen from this year that uh, our artists who leaned a little bit into the analog um, kind of uh, made for successful pivots. I mean, I think next year is a little different than what our current artists and residents um, have journeyed through, whereas you know they planned for in-person projects. Um, but next year, I think for folks will either um, e either you know possibly be proposing projects that are digital, analog, or have that hybridity, as you you mentioned, Sonia, um, where maybe things are are both online and in person. I think. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think that it's a big question that a lot of our, that, that our field is addressing, like what the social practice and community-based works look like in this moment of having to be socially distant um, and how do you balance um, those modes of safety and community care with also developing public artworks and what is the role of public art in this time? So um, I don't know. I think that it's, it's, it's a good question and something I'm interested in seeing how artists um, really develop and approach this through the project proposals. But if you want to chat a little bit more, happy to, um, yeah, I'm happy, if, yeah, please send us an email at apply. You know, you have our contacts on you, but I'm trying to <laughs> address it for folks who probably aren't alums. Um, but yeah, email us, uh, happy to chat a little bit more, especially if you have an idea that you're still working through. Um, yeah, happy to bounce ideas and brainstorm ideas with you. Just briefly, because we're a little bit over time, there's two questions here. Um, one is, what supports are the uh, are there for artists doing the residency for the first time? And you know, so basically, there's funding. So there's twenty thousand dollars that will you know uh, give the artists to do their project uh, distributed throughout the year for one year. Um, there is coaching sessions. Um, there's the workshops. If you this is the first time, if you if you have not been a fellow, then you know you, there's a workshop series that we provide. That there's a lot of different contexts and and community building and conversations about um, building uh, 
community attune our projects. Um, there's a staff uh, support that you know we have uh, office hours and things like that uh, to just you know check in with you. Um, and finally, there is um, we also have our communications team, which is you know uh, not uh, so we have Aisha here, but we have folks from the communi communications team that will you know, make sure that the project is documented and there's different ways we've done that in the past. I share earlier a link for videos that we've done, but with, we have blog posts, blog posts and we have, you know, um, uh, on social media and other ways to engage and amplify the project. So those are the kinds of, you know, things that a resident gets. Um, yeah. I, wait, can I speak to that too? Sure. Um, so you don't do your project alone. You have a whole administrative, emotional, spiritual team that supports you, and and it's um, it's really decadent. So you you will walk away from the laundromat project like, what I'm gonna do now? Because you had someone um, doing budgets for you, you had someone doing marketing for you, you had someone ordering you supplies. Like the laundromat project is a um, hundred percent involved in your project with you so you're not alone in the process thanks for that yeah thank you for that do you want to do the last one before we close out our toy? Yeah, go ahead. uh it's by vic uh the question is what are you looking for in a reference uh maybe i'll ask Sierra to help tag team uh, with me on on this one but i mean a reference can be anyone it's not just professional references just to share there um and it doesn't have to be like by professional, I mean it, it does not have to be like an employer or, um, yeah, an, an employer or someone like that, either present, current, past. Uh, folks have uh, shared mentors, uh, community members they've worked with, artists that they've collaborated with in the past, um, uh, past professors or teachers that they're still in touch with. It's, it's been an array of folks, um, and all of that has been um, really helpful. I mean, Last year was the first time that we, well, I don't know, that we called, I think both, uh, we, we, we made it a, a big point to, to, to reach every reference. And we're gonna do that again, it was really helpful. And I think what we're looking for is just someone who can um, uh, attest to like character and um, modes of collaborating, um, any experience or notes they know or things that they know about your creative practice. Um, possibly someone that has worked with you or, or know what it's like um, or have witnessed uh, you in action, either your creative work in action and or if you're a community-based artist, uh, that that degree of your work. Um, I don't know, Tiara, am I, am I missing something? Is there another element you found um, from the reference? Yeah, I think we pretty much covered it. You know, someone who has, I you know, experience working with you in a group, <laughs> it, that can be a pair, you know, that's a, an important component of the program and, and building a cohort of artists um, or someone who knows about your desire to work within community, to learn, um, to grow your capacity, to learn and, and be, be flexible. Um, and like Lady Sasha said, that doesn't necessarily have to be an employer or you know anybody who has a hier hierarchical relationship with you it can be you know a, a pair, an artist, a friend in that way, just someone who can attest to those kind of qualities and, and your desire to do this work. Great. Well, thank you. We're a little over time, but we hope that, you know, we were able to um, answer your questions and I hope that this was informative. Um, we're very excited that, you know, we have the time to, you know, uh, be here and that you took the time to speak with us. So. Uh, with that, the application process, uh, the, the application closes on October 18th at midnight. Um, we have all the links on our website. Uh, if you have still have any questions, feel free to email us. Uh, we'll be happy to, you know, uh, answer. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll have this up in our YouTube channel uh, shortly, in a couple, in a few, maybe next week. So you want to go through some of the things that we spoke about, have questions and things like that. And we also share the PowerPoint, so you can also you know, use that as a reference. Uh, feel free to reach out, and we're, we're here. We're excited and looking forward to connecting with you and looking forward to 
uh, your applications. So thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good night, y'all. Good night. Hi, Bianca. Hi. Hello. <laughs> I just wanted to say hi before I hopped off. <laughs>